And I will call to order the select board meeting of uh, Monday, January 22nd. So good evening, everybody. First, I have an announcement. We had hoped to have uh, Bill Lambert, a uh, transportation engineer from the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, here, along with some other invited guests, including Senator Waters and uh, town residents, to review uh, safety issues on Portland Avenue. Because of the weather advisory, uh, Bill and I chatted earlier today, and uh, we have postponed that until February 5th. It didn't happen until mid-afternoon. I'm hoping that people saw it. We did put it out on the website, uh, so hopefully uh, everyone will have seen it in time, and no one is making a, a special trip here to see that. All right, uh, we will go on to approval of minutes, and then we'll check in with the community. So uh, we have two sets, December 28th and January 8th. Any comments on either one of those? Oh, okay. So, are, are we probably the 28th, December 28th? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're good with those? All right, so by consensus, uh, Salmi. Mm -hmm. All right, community input? Oh, thank you. So, my name is Marion Crombie. I'm oh, sorry. Marion Crombie. Hi, Marion. I live on Settlement Circle, yep. and I've lived there for 10 years. Yep. And I'm in, yeah, have a seat. Oh, come here. I'm here to get a dump sticker because I was refused it last week. So this is my story. Okay. So three years ago, I had a milestone birthday. And my two sons gave me a surprise birthday party and presented me with a new car. Oh, that's lovely. So the car is registered in my daughter-in-law's name and they I can't register it because there's a lien on it. They have a loan. So until the loan is paid off and out of their name, it continues to stay in their name and they live in Exeter. So for the past three years, I've gone to get my dump sticker and they've been kind enough because they know I live in Rollinsville. And they've been kind enough to give me a dump sticker because I pay taxes. And, and this, you live here. And I live right up the street. Mm -hmm. And so when I went to get my dump sticker last week, one of the ladies said, we can't give you a dump sticker because you, your car is not registered in Rawlings, which it isn't. It's registered in Exeter because it's a gift. I, yeah. I can't help that. Understood. So, <clears throat> so, so, so I, don't, I don't think you're clearly a resident of the town of Rawlsford, we will just say that, you know, as long as what you're bringing to the dump is generated, is region, residential trash generated within the confines of the town, we're fine. They're going, you know, they have to follow their own procedures, and that's one of them. So if you, do you have an email address? Yes. If you give us your email address, I will copy you and let them know that the board, unless the board, unless the board has any objections to this. Okay. That we will thank you very much. See, I'm sorry you have to go through that. So why? So well, I wonder, wonder why so they Kate was always the oh, lady. Oh, I see her. Oh, gosh, yes. No, she was there. Oh. But the other lady. Yeah. Yeah. Not the right. Well, these things happen. They, they're trying she to. She didn't want to do it. So I looked at Kate, yeah. and I know I kind of put her on the spot, but I said, "Can you give me a something change?" And she just. Didn't know what to say. So I just thought that because clearly we will take but care of it. Can I ask a question? Yes. Just <coughs> shouldn't a dump permit be given just for the mere fact that we pay taxes? It shouldn't really depend on what car we well, drive. Well, what we wanted to do is make sure that we, because of the contract that we have with land, the landfill company, that yeah. we can only bring them residential waste that's generated within the town of Bronzeburg. Yeah. So we need to have processes and procedures in place to help guarantee that. So you could be, a, you know, there have been some unique situations. I don't want to say that there I'm haven't sure, been. I'm sure. But, you know, uh, people own the mill buildings. You know, do we give, you know, we can't we can't have mill trash go to, to the dump. So, so you base it on the car. So we base it on the car, it's just one way. But the, that's not in the ordinance. It's the, just a procedure that they use. And so it's easier for us, because the ordinance doesn't specifically say that, yeah. that we can make this, you know, obviously make it right okay. in the situation. It should, be, yeah, should I, be made right. And we're sorry. That, I really appreciate it. And again, I, you know, I know they're only doing their job, so 
I do appreciate you granting me a double. Well, we're sorry, you know, for breaking the rule, but sometimes it happens. Well, hey, that's okay, as long as you're kind of So, it went into two lines, but it's very not perfect. Do you mind if I take it on? Take care of that. Thank you. So, so next week I'm okay to use the. Documents. I'm gonna hopefully send that email off tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks very Thank much. You so I appreciate much. it. Good appreciate to see you. See you. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye. Good to Bye. see you. Thank Any you. other community input? Nice to meet you. Yes, Celia. Um, there are several town meetings coming up, and I'm wondering if the town has started to think about child care and whether or not they will be providing them child care at these meetings? Oh, that's a very good question. I know I've talked to the school district or the school board and they will be providing child care for their meeting February 3rd, but providing child care may allow other people to come and voice So we're talking about February 10th, which is coming up sooner rather than later, and town meeting. And yeah, that Saturday, March yeah. 17th. Yeah, okay, we'll take a little start to put out some feelers and see what I assume that we would I'll have a bunch of out back on March 17th. With the kids. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get a pass on that, my friend. All right. And <laughs> in what might be helpful is reaching out to the record committee and seeing if they have any staff that... Um, I thought we did that last year, and, but, you know, it's, it's worth another shot. That would be interested in just working for the day or whatever. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Any other uh, community input? Oh, yep. Suzanne. Yes, I'm Kim St. Hilaire, yes, um, Can you tell us if you've received any requests for a Kino or an article in town? And if you have, what the status is of that? We have it, uh, yes. We, uh, Mark Bowen from uh, Dover Bowl came to see us a couple weeks ago. and. Uh, requested that the board consider uh, putting Kino as a uh, Warren article. And it was just Michael, uh, uh, Michael and I were the only two board members in attendance that night. And so we were hoping to wait for a meeting with Jody. And so this, this is it. So it's on the agenda for later on tonight. Uh, Michael, I, it, I, you, I don't want to speak for you, but you know, you're, would you like to state your opinion? Yeah, I'm all for it. He's all for it. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of neutral, so I'm going to vote for it and let the voters a chance. Yeah. So unless... When I say I'm all for it, I'm all for it putting on the ballot. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't care what happens. Sure, did you, I don't want to force your hand if we're not ready to talk about it just yet. But. Yeah, well, that's fine. We're just putting it on the ballot to let the voters decide. Yeah, right. it's, a, um, it, it's a very simple, if you want to give me two minutes. <clears throat> um, I, could, it, it, I won't bother to take the time. Just very simple. Do you want to authorize Kino in the town of Rollinsford? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And so it's a language that we got uh, right from the State Lottery Commission. Uh, and we'll vote on whether the board wants to put, put it forward as a Warren article. Do you have We're, to have a public hearing? Pardon? Public hearing? No. Okay. It does not require a public hearing. I think it, um, I asked, and at this very moment, I don't remember. Um, I don't remember whether it goes on the, I think it goes on the official ballot. The, the Tuesday vote. So it's one of those. Simple majority, yes or no. I think I read on the New Hampshire lottery site that it was a town meeting vote. So we might double check that. Well, town meeting is starts with that vote. That is town meeting, the Tuesday. So, uh, and again, the way I've got the warrant set up, it's right now in draft form. I mean, it's the first, it comes before the vote for tree huggers. That's not quite what it is, is it? They're not tree huggers. Tree wardens. Fence huggers. Fence huggers. Fence viewers. Fence viewers, yes, that's it. So, <laughs> we don't have uh, Pardon? We don't have uh, I'm sorry, I'm being, I'm being flipped, and I shouldn't be flipped. But in any event, I believe it is a valid vote on the Tuesday election, a simple majority. Okay. So, it, it, as it stands, probably the select board is going to support bringing it forward. Yes, yeah, so we've already said to Mark Bowen that if we did not, that we would be taking a vote tonight, mm -hmm. and that if we did not decide to bring it forward, that we would let him know so there would be sufficient time to put in a petition or an article. And is that, is that, are you here because you're hoping to see it on the ballot? Um, just want to know the status of it. 
I have friends that are interested in the um, in the status of that. So. Okay. All right. Yes, Dennis. Uh, I'm here because Ken was going to be here tonight. And we all Ken? Be. Ken Shorey. From the Legion? Yeah, from the Legion, yeah. And uh, he hasn't shown up yet, so that's what I'm here for. Are you in Are you in favor? Oh, of? yeah, yeah, okay. definitely, yeah. Anything for the kids, you know. That's where it's going, for the kid in the garden. <laughs> so there are three that. sites in Rollinsford. Rollinsford has three sites that would be eligible to run Kino. Oh. Dover Bowl. Legion and Alexander's. Oh, Those are the only Alexander's. three sites. Well, mm -hmm. it's, it's some you need a liquor license. With yeah, them. so I can't imagine. <laughs> I don't. They've shown no interest. They haven't come to see us, so uh, I don't imagine that. That's so, but but it's Mark, it is an option. The Mark is yeah. interested, and well, now you're saying that the Legion is also interested. So yeah. So we will let. Do you want? Uh, I mean, I assume that it's going to pass. Do you want to, to know if it does not? Yes, because okay. we can generate a warrant out of it. All right. It. Okay. It's already generated. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, you know, you never know what's going to happen. There's a know. warrant article waiting for us up there, you know, if it doesn't petition? pass. The petition? Yeah. Oh. Do they, they have the, the poll tabs at the Legion now, don't they? Do they yes, they do, yeah. They have them at uh, Monday yeah. Night Bingo. Yeah. They go in at 3 and they pull tabs till 6 until bingo starts. Yeah. That's you. Okay. That gives the church a hundred thousand. The two churches in Summersworth get a hundred thousand. This church gets fifty thousand for one night a week. A lot of pull tabs. A lot of pull tabs. I'm, I'm a lot of bingo. I'm not know what a pull tab is, but I don't want to take time to know because there's icy conditions. I don't care. I just don't. Know. I'll tell you on the way out. The Kim, was there something else? Just wondering if um, you had talked to Chief Ducharme about this at all, and if he had any. Um, we did about. check in with him. He had. No uh, concerns. Just by email was not at a public meeting, but he he didn't have any particular concerns about that. Dennis? Could I just have one comment before I leave? Of course. About the water. Yes. Everybody's talking about the water, the lead in the water. Okay. Well, we're having our meetings uh, every week. We were at the state last week. They gave us a lot of good information. We have a meeting tomorrow. And if anybody's here that has that has a house that was built in 1986 and after, they might have lead in their water. 1986 and after? after. That's when they stopped using lead solder in 1986. Before. So but before, 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 before 1986. Before, yes, I'm, I'm sorry, before 1986, right. yes. Yes. It's all right. It's yes, so that's, uh, so that's uh, a lot of... Uh, that's a lot um, of homes. Yes. So every house in the village, my house must have it. You know, we have test, we have test sites, 24. Is there anything that the town can do to help? Well, if uh, it's a simple thing of running your water, cold water in the morning, just just for two minutes, just turn the tap on, where you drink out of it, run it, and that'll take the lead deposit. If there's any lead, that's where it's at. That's where it's at. Do you have yeah. the mechanism? Are you asking us if we could put this on our town website? No, we're going to put it on our okay. website. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We we got a few more meetings. Uh, okay. Uh, we we talked to our engineers at HTA. They're going to start a corrosion control system. Hopefully, the pipes are old. You know. Yeah. But it's not coming from the wells. It's coming from the house. I see. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much. Appreciate we'll it. We'll let you know good what's luck. going yeah, on. Good luck with all of that. Yeah. It's difficult. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Well, if we're ready, sure. If we're ready to. I mean, I don't want to. Are we okay? Yeah. So this isn't, we're going to, when, we, when, the, when, the, when the warrant is actually finished, we'll be able to do the actual recommend, not recommend. But this will just allow the board to show that it is going to be putting it on the warrant so that, you know, so that people then won't have to go out and do the petition warrant. So I will entertain a, a motion. I'll move that we place Kino on the March 2018 warrant. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so it will be there. And just based on this vote, I mean, I don't know, but it likely also have the board's recommendation. So I think I, Kim raised a good point. I thought I was of the same opinion that, that, that Kim was, that it went to, to the business portion of town meeting, not on the official ballot, but we can both be wrong. I don't know. But I thought that's what I read, too, when we 
I'll looked check. at it last week. But I'll check. There's uh, NewHampshireLottery.com has an article. Oh, NewHampshireLottery.com has an article on it. Yeah, we have the frequently asked questions that we. We have. There's a fact them, we'll from the Municipal Association as well. So, and I thought it was something that was discussed at the business meeting. But well, are you not confusing with the minimum housing standards? Because that does should come out. I thought they both did, but I'm hoping they both don't. I know that one does. That one does go to the business. Yeah, I think not. All right, so we will check on that and put it where it belongs. All right, on to uh, the rest of the meeting. Department heads, <coughs> I see one department head. Hi, Chief Rutherford. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? How's our new fire engine? We're up there getting trained on it right now. Excellent. Representative Neal going through a slideshow, PowerPoint presentation, and then they'll have some practical stuff to do. Found out today it's finally registered. Yeah, so I can I saw it on the road. Yeah. And get their driving time in. Yeah. And they can start doing some pumping skills. When so do you think it will be placed into service? A couple weeks. Because that starts the early February. Oh, okay. That starts the ball rolling. Well, the biggest you. thing is I'm scheduling okay. to have somebody come in, take all the lights, emergency equipment, and whatnot, emergency stuff off of three, and put it on one. Because when that truck was upgraded ten years ago. All that lighting met the new NFPA standard. The old engine does not. So rather than yeah. uh, not utilize that, and he's going to give us a very good price to swap all that over. Light bar, warning lights, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Put on the old on the engine. And after that, we'll start switching everything over. Pick a date. I'll coordinate that with you. So if Dara people or state yeah. people want to come in. Yeah. And then we'll play taps and drive it all over the junkyard. I know. I know. <laughs> okay, I got some bills to pay, okay. and then I'll update you on radio issues. Excellent. Because yeah. it is the beginning of the year, you don't have to do the new year. Everybody wants everything to do. Um, first one I have is. Uh, Number 1331 is to Townsend Energy. Because, like everybody else, when we had this, that real cold snap, our furnace did not work very well either. So, we had that Townsend come in and do some in some, uh, you know, some repairs, needed a couple of different valves replaced and whatnot. So, they came in and took care of that during that same cold snap. And it's uh, close to $330 for repair. That'll come out of the building line item. Mike, it's the first one. Sort of number 1331, one, Townsend Energy. It appears the fire station heating up for $330.50. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, number 1331. Caroline in the morning, right? All these videos? Okay, to get some other stuff. I was going to expect when we talk to her. She's looking for us, so I'll give you that when we get to the end. Uh, the next one is for uh, 1332 Seacoast Chief Fire Officer Mutual Aid District. And that's our annual dues for the year. And uh, Seacoast Chief Officers, what that provides is. Uh, we have an incident where we need mutual aid for our large hazmat incident. Um, they have trailers which we can use for filling up air packs, and then basically they have just a higher up than the regular community mutual aid stuff we do. And that's two hundred dollars. Okay, number two thirty three. Um, Seacoast Chiefs Firefighter. Officers mutual aid for the amount of annual dues for the amount of $200. I'm second and I'm thankful that Shirley got that one this year and I didn't. That was long. Yes. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Any other discussion or questions? All right, I'll call it. Then all those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> so, okay, but over basically that outfit right there encompasses 36 different towns. Um, and we represented in that, and it's for the chief.
chief, once a month is a meeting at somebody's fire station in their town, and that goes from Newburyport to Amesbury, all the way out past Kingston, up into Maine, 36 communities are all members of that. Once a month I drive someplace to have a meeting. The last one I have for tonight is our local community mutual aid association. And it's the same thing, it's the uh, annual dues for the year, it's number 1332, $2,000. Mm -hmm. And they provide us with a uh, quarter count machine, which allows us to do our annual testing. Every firefighter has to be fit tested for his mask to make sure it fits. They give us that, they give us the air van, and that's where a lot of those comes out of now. Yeah, we'll purchase order number 1333, Community Mutual Aid Association, uh, for annual dues for $2,000. Say. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 started a year ago. I've gone over this a little bit, right? With what Dover has done. They put a $1.2 million upgrade to their whole communication system. And the key component to that is that they're going to go digital, which is getting you up to the best you can be. Along with that, they built three new communication towers. One of them is on Middle Road at their sewer treatment plant. Another one is at their new tank at the north end, which is up by the county jail. And the other one used to be located in City Hall Clock Tower. They moved that over to where the new police station is by the parking garage. The way they've laid these three towers out, and actually when they, when they moved to the new parking garage, they took the repeater out of the clock tower at town at the City Hall, and that they put a big hole in our communications because with all the buildings and stuff downtown, they moved it over just that little bit, trying to get signals out from downtown, deteriorated our communication abilities a lot, an awful lot. So the way they have their set up is they're in alignment from north to that one in the middle to the one in the south. So it cuts right through the middle of the city. And it's all aimed and, and circumferenced around Dover. So they get the best they should right? They're paying one point two million dollars for it. And going digital. What they originally were going to do is keep an analog component, which was going to allow them to activate their station tones in their three firehouses. And the last minute on December 22nd, they decided, we don't want to do analog anymore, we're going to make it all digital. And part of the reason they were staying analog was for us, because that's how we communicate and how our system operates, is on the analog side. When they made that change, it kind of left us dangling. Well, what are we going to do? So, and I knew all this was coming, but I found out about that, like I told you before, it was on the night of the fire we had on Oak Street, is when I told them, by the way, there's a big change that you guys need to address it. Okay. So I did, got a hold of these people and made communications. So on Wednesday night when Bill came in, his suggestion to us is, because uh, I asked if we go to jail. He said, yeah, you go to jail. Over the tune of about $80,000. Because what it would do, but he also said, if we do digital, the way Dover has their system set up, our system would actually be worse than it will be if we stay in law. Because the way the towers are lined up, everything is, is, is circumvented right there for Dover. If we stay on the analog side, the components that we're going to need to purchase will be placed on Garrison Hill Tower, which directly aims at us. And he also says with the analog component, with the system that we're also trying to put into place on top of the water tower, it would tie in directly with that. And he says, by going to stay with analog, that we would have you know, great communications with our own community, better than we've ever had before. So, so the repeater that we're putting on the tower is also analog? Yes. Okay. 
And I know that's kind of bold because they got to dig a trench and put power to it, do all that kind of stuff. I got all the information. I'm a now. digital kid myself, but you know, I'm not a radio communication person. Well, so. Same way, but and I asked him. He says, you know, analog is, is you know kind of a dying system. He goes, it is, but it's still going to be around for 10 to 15 years anyway. Uh, and that's the best way, really the only way that we can do anything at this point right now. Um, can I, can I ask you a question just to make sure that I, I've understood? Yes, no, go right ahead. So, so when you were talking to Two Way, because of the because of Dover's configuration, even if we all of a sudden magically had eighty thousand dollars to go digital, he would wouldn't benefit us. Wouldn't benefit. Okay, I just because, want to make sure I heard that right. correctly. <laughs> the way it would is if we would do digital and have a spot on Garrison Hill Tower, because that would be more to our side. It's right on Garrison Hill sits right on the town line, and that would be able to be and take care of our side, but if we would try to incorporate our needs on their existing towers that they just built, it wouldn't improve us. It wouldn't give us anything any better than we have now. And why do we need to? They are our dispatching. They are our answering service. And they receive all the 911 calls. Right. And so, they and, and there's no other, the only there's other no plan B to turn to? to the only to other explore. alternative is Stratford County which is mainly a PV entity, and to go to them, as I did make contact with them last fall when this was going on, they're about 98% capacity. So in order for them to try to get us in, the cost would be up in the $50,000 range to switch to them. And their main tower, their communications come out of the, uh, they're in the, uh, the jail. County. Of uh, the county complex up there. And, uh, and they said, you know, we'll probably fit you in, but we can't guarantee what we're going to be able to do for you. Mm -hmm. So. Summersworth? Summersworth. This does Summersworth. They don't uh, do anything else. I never approached Summersworth to see if they could do that. I know years ago they used to do Berwick, and then Berwick separated from them, and now Berwick's in South Berwick, so. I mean, you know, it just occurs to me, I mean, is Dover, just to ask, is Dover the only player in this game for us? For us right now it is, unless we, you know, go someplace else. And I guess the thing is, even though we're, we're, we're on the hook for the money to, to basically buy the analog components and it's something that our town would now own, it is the most cost-efficient way at this point to do business. So, Mark, is this the 16000 that I heard? Uh, bandied about somewhere? That's the number. Okay. Dover is already, they, they had said when they decided to go digital, they said, we want to return the components, we don't need them. And then I was like, no, 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 we can't because of our needs. And they have some other funding that they wanted, so they want that $16,000 back to use someplace else. And you just can't buy communications commitment and then like, take it to Walmart like you go into the return line. It does not happen that way. It, just to get a license in order to get a frequency is like a six month process and it goes through like seven or eight different state, federal, local agencies to get all this stuff done. So they just could not return it. Basically they only needed to find something to do with it. So basically for our needs, it's just something that the town needs to figure out how we want to add that to our inventory. So when, you know, what is the time what is the timeline on all of this? How much Dover time do we have to try to Dover wants out? to flip the switch in March. That puts the put on their new system. They're not going to do it until we're ready to go. They have the parts, they have the components, everything is sitting there. The spot on Garrison Hill Tower is all ready to go. It's just a matter of deciding how to make an agreement with Dover and get the okay from them and it'll be done. So we would own the equipment, but it would be they would so they would be using our analog equipment to two do way, what two way has the licensing agreement on the tower for the spot on the tower that's through two way. The only other fly in the argument with this whole thing is when you're trying to because Dover goes digital and we have to slide off our frequency just a hair because these things it's, it's like trying to dial in your little transistor radio mm -hmm. and you really can't it's very hard to pick the station you may want. It's the same kind of thing when it comes into the this radio realm. So when you start bouncing around and changing frequencies just by millibars, uh, it becomes an issue. So when Dover's changing and with us having to make a change, they have to send out in a 70 mile radius to every community that's on any sort of radio network and get an okay from them that they can do this. 
basically they're trying to make sure that nobody else has the same frequency. Yeah. Well, Kenny Bump Fire has the same frequency. Kenny Bump Fire was, is within that 70 mile radius. So um, we've been negotiating with Kenny Bump Fire to try to get them to allow this to happen. We're making inroads with them. At first they were like, nope, nothing to do with it, close the door, no. But come to find out their primary frequencies that they operate off is different from the one that we're requesting to use. It's more or less a backup for what they're using. And we've made strides and it looks like it may go through between Dover Fire, us, and Two Way. We've been trying to make inroads. And they've assured these people in Kennebunk that they can put the equipment on the tower and they will. And that they can modulate it, aim it, do whatever they do in the world of radio stuff. So we'll not bother Kennebunk. Once they can get that assurance, Kenny Buck will sign off on it. And then on our side of things and what we want to do, then they can move forward. So in order to make this happen, it would it be one contract with two way? What's the what's the well, you're talking contractual on the, on the mechanism? Yeah, how does it actually it's, what it's we, really not going to be anything with two way. It's okay. going to be with the city of Dover. City of Dover. So it would be a, a, a contract and a, or an agreement. Uh, wherever it gets written up. To the city of Dover for yeah. 16000 And this is just a one-time fee for cap, a capital expenditure? Because of the late notice when Dover made the switch, city manager Joel has said that it could be done over a period of time. I don't know if that's an MOU or however you want to do it. It doesn't have to go give them a check for sixteen grand. That, that's nice. They understand that. So, so, the contact person for all this is Chief Kyle Russo, the police chief. He runs the police and, it, and their dispatch, our units is run under the PD umbrella over there. So, uh, basically we have to contact Chief Kyle Russo and find out what he's willing to do. One suggestion that we've had is we pay them our annual answering fee every year, it's like $6,000. Uh, and I think they're kind of open to it. This came from city manager Joyle. I wanted to piggyback on that and you know, make it ten or $12,000 for a few years until it's paid off. That's one way to do it. Okay. So you don't have to go looking for sixteen grand. You don't have yep. to do the warrant article. However, the inner workings of all that stuff goes between you three sitting on that side of the table and them over there is where we're at. But there's no way around not having to uh, find a way to purchase And you feel equipment. convinced that, that do this analog approach is the way to go? Because the thing with digital is we still, a lot of what we do, and I explained it the other day, a lot of it comes over, everybody has, you know, your cell phone. And that's how a lot of our people get notified. I get notified on this. It still isn't the best way. A lot of guys still use a little pager you carry on your belt. They make new pagers in digital. Ours are analog, and they make new ones, but they're kind of in their infancy, and they run between eight and a thousand dollars per unit. So for us to equip all of our members, we would need twenty or so. I'm talking twenty thousand dollars just for pagers, and then add on the equipment cost of the sixteen, and then reprogramming everything that needs to be done just keeps going. To so I didn't want to bring that to the table. I don't just want to face that at this you know, 99th minute in this process. So talking again with Bill, the best thing is now, and it will still be very well manageable for the next 10 to 15 years, stay in one, put the equipment on the hill. We have to reprogram our radios, our bases, and our portals. A few thousand dollars there in the page. They have to get reprogrammed to the new frequency when it's okay. Would those, would that last expense that you just mentioned, <coughs> though, normally just come out of your budget? Is that find it somewhere. I know it'll be more than the actual radio repair line that we have, but it'll be found somewhere. I'm a pretty good manager of my budget. I think oh, I'll absolutely. be able to find it. Yeah. So, so one of the things that we could do is, you know, maybe have you work with Caroline or Caroline and one of us, and kind of go through your budget and see what you think you could manage. I mean, could you manage, you know, if you could manage like a $10,000 uh, a line that gets increased to $10,000 to handle the dispatch, then we could use that and, and negotiate with Dover to sort of make that happen. So you're saying find money in this year's budget for that? Yes. That
This year, 2018. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's the unknown quantity. Sure. And we say, yeah, we'll take it out of vehicles, then the vehicles break down, and we just don't have it. Well, so I know what you're saying, and yeah, I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it would be a way to sort of contain it to the fire department, at least at the beginning. <clears throat> I mean, and if something happens, you know, there are other places where we can look, like contingency, to, to, to try to... Uh, yeah, well, I think the first step is to find out what Dover wants and how they want to manage it. Yes. And go from there and see what we're going to have. I did see Caroline at 8 o'clock, and I brought up the day where we are and what may happen. She says, well, whatever you guys decide, whether you do it or she does it, or whoever, stop the ball rolling. Let's see what Dover wants to do. Okay. Can I, I'm just going to go, because Chief Duchamp is here, and ask him. Is there anything that uh, Marcus just said that you see as problematic with what you're trying to do with the... Not at all. Okay. It sounds like it's going to be very beneficial for... Fire yeah. on this end over here for us, for the town. Okay. And it will be for everything. It's once the other one yeah. gets up on the tower, yeah. the water tower, it's going gonna, it's gonna to prove us immensely. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good, good news. So it's just, yeah. you know, we just have to scrounge around, see where we can find a box, and then we'll figure it out. But so one of us, somebody will contact, unless you feel you would like to do that, the Dover folks. No, and, no, you guys do that. All right. It's more, it's more in your room. Than okay, we will do that. I need to do that. It's Chief oh. Paul Russo, the police station. 742 4646. That's certainly a better scenario than what Jody and I were looking at last week. 742 4246? 742 4646. 4646. Yeah, because I mean, when, when we talked last week, I didn't have the other components after talking to Bill and getting the whole gist of what was going on, and he laid it all out and says, in reality, you guys will be better off staying with what you got. It will improve you immensely from anything we've had in a long time. It will coincide with what is trying to be put up on the tower, so it's all like, that's good, that's good, that's good. So, so above and beyond whatever we're going to negotiate with the Dover PD, the, the, other, the other associated changes are going to cost, you know, you're anticipating would cost few thousand dollars to reprogram or anything. What's the, is that two? Is that five? Is it's not five. I bet you it would probably be the two, three range. Just has reprogramming and everything. And we've had this discussion before. Anytime any community around us changes something, it always affects yeah. us because we have to change to what they're doing. This is a little bit more all-encompassing. Um, because we have to do everything all the way down to the pagers. Did, did, one, of the, do that did one of the Berwicks do this to us the last year? Berwicks done it, South Berwicks done it, yeah. When they change the frequency, you only have to deal with radios. They added um, contingency this time, is we have to pagers also. Some of our pagers, you know, I hope they can do them because they're pretty old. <laughs> I have one that sits on my nightstand that's 29 years old that wakes me up in the middle of the night when I have to go to a call. It's I don't know if that's operates. good news or bad news. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but like I said, the cost of a new digital pager is like anywhere from eight to one thousand dollars to buy an analog pager. You can get them for you know one fifty to two hundred dollar yeah. range. Is there something on the CIP in the future for radio stuff? And what is it? And does this how does this affect any the of that? thing that we wanted to add to CIP is our portables are, you know, again, from way back when, and we stick up their grant, they hand all that stuff out to us, and that's what we're using. And they're just starting to get old and unrepairable. So it's a matter of putting in a CIP line to do it in increments to replace the portable radios and the base station radio and the fire station. The thing is, it's like everything else, you could get radios in the $3,000 range. Now to get one handheld portable radio is $5,000 for one unit. We have 30 of them. So with with this equipment, we're going to does the analog versus digital come into play with with, with that um, CIP? The radios can handle the digital component that Dover's uh, going to go to. We can we could be reprogrammed to handle that. So they could go either way. So we're we're not. I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, we don't have to it's, solve it's this a riddle right now because it's on. It's in the future, but right. it's the paging system. The people that are using. The those of us that use the old pagers, that's that's the new, one of the major components driving us on why you can stay in the cost of replacement.
replacement for those. It's just it's over at this point. And it's just it's new technology on the pages that way. They don't. It's not like they can go out and the bargain hunt for them because there's very few of them out there. Yeah, it's in the world that deals with this stuff. Is there's no cheap fix for any of these things. You know, when it comes to fire end of it, communications end of it. And I'm sure Chief will tell you about police end of it. There's no there's no bargain basement. Make this work. Right. That's what I used to call my line of business, the scourge of technology. I mean, you're like, you're, you know, the world goes like this, and, you know, if you don't at least take some, make some attempts to, you know, it. it and that's some of what we're dealing with again. It's tyrannical in a way. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just constant with what yeah. we're dealing with over there, because we've got to keep up. I mean, I have no choice. Yeah. All right. Well, we will. So, you know, like I said, I came in with that number and I expected it to be a lot more in some options, which would have been, but this is the most cost effective. 16000 plus another three or so. The most beneficial. See, the three and whatnot, I was going to find that one in my own way. And the rest of it, trying to find something else is going to be a, a big, big challenge. So, that will well, we'll see what we can negotiate with the city of Dalton. Yeah, I mean, I'm just throwing that number up. That was just one of the suggestions for this one. It's like 6000 or whatever, or 6 and change for the answering service. And, you know, I don't know how long Is he, has he, has he been apprised of this? I mean, if one of us calls him, he will know what we're talking about. He knows it's coming. Right. Yeah, because uh, when I had the meeting the other day with, uh, with Bill Bartlett, and they were having another meeting with the Dover contingency that's getting the second round, I said, well, pass that on. Pass it on to my select board when I see them on Monday night and get the ball rolling. But yeah, like I said, this happened just so quick. It's a ping, 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 ping. It wasn't like we could wait. And I wasn't sure how to make it work. I had to go to a horn article. And time it was just too essence. late in the game for Oh, yeah. yeah. I, know. I thought I'm totally aware of that. Yeah. That's why we will make a little bit of a concession on our part to the fact that, you know, write the check as we need it now. We're willing to do some. All right. So we'll see what they're willing to do. Pretty much that's it. Okay. Any questions? You look confused. No. I'm fine. Thank you for doing all that. No questions? No. Thanks for coming in and meeting with me, Mike, the other day. Well, we'll keep it moving forward. I mean, like I said, I was getting myself educated because you can tell I've obviously got a lot more information than I brought to the table tonight than I did on Saturday. I know we were. It's all better now. I, well, I'm not an expert on digital versus analog. I just assume we want to go. Digital this, the newer technology, but I feel a lot more comfortable after. That was hearing my goal. Yeah, it was my goal initially, too. Let's just go that way. 10 or 15 years is a little better. I mean, it's kicking the can down the road, but uh, on the other hand, you know, 80,000 is, is a big reach. So, mm -hmm. and, and it's not going to be uh, to our advantage at the beginning. So, no, 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 no. there's no, you know, it, the argument seems to resolve itself as yeah. far as. No, we have we <coughs> had a uh, communication spot on Garrison Hill Tower where Jimmy Andrews used to do a lot of the communication stuff. Did you deal with him, Chief, when you when Jimmy Andrews had his stuff up on Garrison Hill? We did for a little bit, yes. Uh, we had great, great work working then. But then he sold off his rights to some of the stuff on the tower, and that went away. And that was the beginning of our rate of communication problems. Well, we had to have repeaters to fire trucks, and we had to do all kinds of different things just to communicate, like if we're down in the hole down here or something. You know, we couldn't talk. You know, we need to use smoke signals. We couldn't get out anywhere. So coming full circle, we're going to end up back on that tower, about the same place where we were, and our communications are going to you know, improve immensely. Well, that's, that's the that's good the part. That's the goal. It works good for yeah, us. Yeah. And actually, it'll work good for, for George and, and for Chief, because mm -hmm. we're all going to use local. It's going to improve that immensely. Mm -hmm. So. Looking at that over that time frame, we're going to improve everything. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You're good. Thank you. Do you have equally good news, Chief Bouchard? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, at our last couple of case meetings, uh, we've been briefed on this program called FirstNet, where the federal government wants to um, revamp countrywide, the radio program for police, fire, and EMS. So what's going to happen is in the future, mobile radios and portable radios are going to be non-existent. We're all going to go into cell phone technology. 
and uh, whether it's AT&T or Verizon or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. uh, they've been tasked with building up the system countrywide to, uh, to take care of that. They anticipate that's going to happen sometime between five and ten years. So that, that's where the future is, cell phone dispatching as opposed to having, having radios. Mm -hmm. so. so this is like, so this will just kick, for the fire department anyway, kicks the can down the road. Correct. But I guess it's just the way it's going to have to be. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, but there's nothing we need to do at the moment no. for the first net. No. Okay. I have uh, two purchase orders. The first is from the Stratford County Sheriff's Department um, for our annual IMC computer support fee. And that's $3,295, and that comes out of our dispatch line item. And that's purchase order number 1355. Well, I got two. I don't care. <laughs> 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 Who purchase order 1355? There's Stratford County Sheriff's for one annual. Um, support fee of $3,295. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And the next purchase will go for K9 Chaos, our annual uh, shelter fee, animal shelter fee. And that's a five hundred dollars, and that will come out of our animal shelter fee line item. And it's purchase order number one three five four. We're going to move purchase order, order number one three five four to Canine Chaos for our annual fee of five hundred dollars. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Purchase orders. Um, you had sent myself, yes. uh, a road agent, and you know, plowing Second Street. Yes. Um, Five cars for at least six hours were parked on Second Street during the parking ban. Uh, well, first of all, we weren't notified. And secondly, uh, George said he spoke with Mike Dion. I guess Mike Dion takes care of downtown there. I waved to him as he went by. And with a plow up, could he come to him? According to George, he was told there was one car there when he went down at one point. I don't know if it was the same time you saw him, whatever, but when he went down Second Street, there was one car there, went around, did a loop downtown, and then when he went back for the second loop, that the vehicle was going at that point. So, so other than that, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, we didn't tow any cars from this last storm. On the storm prior, we ended up did, we ended up uh, towing a couple of cars in the downtown area. How does so, that process happen? I mean, do you just are you just as part of your normal route? You, if you see something, you right, call to have it towed. Right. We'll, we'll stop. We'll try to find the owner of, uh, within the house or whatever. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, the case that we had recently, uh, the cars they were living in town, but the cars were registered at their prior addresses out of the community. So, you know, once you sit, you sit there and you blow the air horn a couple of times, no one comes out and calls the record and off they go. Um, but if we're busy and, you know, we don't get the chance to make the loop down there, and if we don't get called by highway or someone else, say, oh, by the way, you know, there are a bunch of cars on Second Street or Fourth Street, whatever the case might be, um, you know, we're not going to know. Is that one of the and other mechanisms, is that whoever is um, plowing would would call? They would, they would notify us, and then we would make the, the call as to whether it should be towed or not. Yeah. Uh, but certainly, um, I would, you know, if you see it, you know, you're more than welcome to give us a call, say, 2nd Street, 3rd Street, or whatever the case might be, mm -hmm. as opposed to festering over it, and then the next day saying, hey, you know, you had that problem all there yesterday, so. <laughs> I will call you directly. Okay. And uh, I will send the word out to whomever might be on this. And Sunday. George and I have talked to, and, and he said he would speak with. Uh, the does Mike to, does Mike have the capacity in? I suppose he has a cell phone, right? Well, he's got a radio. In the is there, so there's a radio. Some, some of the some of the hard one does have radios in it. Um, I know we've given George a couple of our older radios right. that they're going to put in the Bobcat or the Greater or something, whatever, yeah. front end loader or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean they certainly have the capacity to okay. to. Uh, 
to notify us that uh, there's an issue someplace in town. So Mike could have called. He could have called. I, I, I'm assuming because he has in the past. Yeah, one yeah. car would be one thing. Literally so it there could be just, yeah, on the yeah, I mean, it could be, you know, transitional, maybe, George. And so when there's five cars, that means yeah. nothing road happens. doesn't get yeah, plowed. No, I understand. I, I, I do understand. So, yeah. Yes, and you lived there. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I do know. And I, so if it happens on that it. street, I'm imagining it could only be worse on 3rd Street than 2nd Street. Actually, Thursday's been very good. Oh. Actually, one Front Street and First Street, we had the business open the other day, so, you know, so we give them some allowance. Right. Uh, obviously, in Front Street. But uh, Front Street and Second Street. So I think it's been very nice that you try to find them before we tell them. But. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're, we're making an attempt to find them first. But it's the same people every storm. So sometimes it is. I yeah. just tell them <laughs> they know better. It's yeah, yeah, like the winter parking at night time. Sometimes it's uh, quite often it's the same car. Really? Naive, mm -hmm. naive. Can you tow it? Not all, not just for uh, a winter park permit violation, no. Yeah. If they have three, more than three tickets unpaid, then we can tow at that point, according to the ordinance. Otherwise, it has to be established when they're uh, oh, our emergency, uh, emergency storm parking ban. Then we can tow it. I see. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> tons of fun. <laughs> but certainly, I encourage you know, if, if any of you see any problems, anyway, even in your community or whatever the case might be. You know, just, just give us a call and you know, we'll go out and just look at the situation, see if it warrants immediate action. So, good evening, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's all that I have for you. Annual report. Yeah, it's we'll just be, a reminder. Done this weekend. Can you provide it to us as a PDF? I can. Oh, yes. That would be wonderful. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. That is enough for Joey. The part of the, of the issue, I don't know exactly how or why, but <clears throat> because it, it was coming in typewritten on letterhead, I, I can't remember the detail, but I mean, the there was a reason why the our person who prints them She has to do scanning it in, that's not as clear. Yeah, there's, there's that, something like that. So once, but the but the printer can do it. So, but she does it all as one run. So, because she does it all as one run, we can't then chunk it up on the website, and it's so it's kind of crazy. So, if we get it in individual PDF chunks, then we'll be able to right. do it. So, thank you. And I right. also forward to the uh, the folks on Highway Safety. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 One name change. Right. Okay. Sure. So, all right. Excellent. Yeah. So. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anything for me? No, as you can see, we're here meeting, although it, it is a little icy. It but is. I drove well, up. It wasn't too bad. Not too bad. bad. So. Okay. Yeah. That's good. But the DOT folks are, uh, have been moved to February 5th. So I'm hoping that you. Well, I was looking around, so it was moving. Yeah, yeah I'm hoping that you and other highway yeah, safety. Either I get here late or. Yeah, no, they. they yeah. We put it on the website as soon as we found out. We yeah. have a flight. Touch base with the person this morning, but he didn't get back sure. until this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. So February 5th, so it would be nice if you could be here sure. at 7 o'clock uh, and other yeah. highway safety folks. And actually, I might have some stats for your for accident rates okay. going on, especially that would be here. Because uh, I haven't seen Judy Curry at the meeting that we had earlier today for the EOP update. And she asked me if I had any SAS for tonight. I said, well, no, no one's asked me for any SAS, but it might be good because last time we talked about yeah. this issue on Polar Mountain, we, yeah. did, we had some stats. Well, that would be great if you could bring some. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's super. Yeah, I guess people got the message because no one, no one came. So yeah, so that please, that's good. Well, I don't feel bad now. I'm saying she's like, yeah. it, it just seven, it, you know <laughs> to have to have to you know somebody drive on icy roads yeah. for a safety meeting just seems a little right. uh, yes, yeah. supremely so. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Have a nice evening. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Um, so under highway and transfer, I have something called per diem employees. I really don't know what that is. Does anyone else know what that is? That was before the um, employee that was part time. Right. There's a paper in my thing. Oh, okay. He hours. is not per diem. He is. Uh, he was part time. He is a part, part time hourly. Right. Yeah. So he just does get a buyout or whatever we call it. Right? Yeah. 
So is that it? That's it. Okay. So I am looking at uh, the employees Wayne Howe and for uh, personal for sick leave. Well, you don't get paid for sick leave, but for uh, vacation, he is owed two hundred twenty nine dollars thirty one cents. Okay. Any uh, I will sign this then. Then we take the per diem on this now. But what is something else? There's a, we still need a per diem at the transfer station for Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Is that what that is? So, but we want to, no one's brought it to my attention recently, but they might have been talking amongst themselves about it because the spring is coming and it, get, it will get busier. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, no, none of us uh, put this on. We'll just say that it had to do with this. Uh, use of transfer station without a sticker. Uh, we had uh, Erin Crombie speak to us, but that wasn't wasn't using without a sticker. She wanted a sticker. Is this is this some other? I didn't ask for sure. Okay, so we will just kind of go over that. Go that. It wasn't uh, there's no one who needs to use it that needs a letter or something. Or? Not well, not unless there's something in in the folder. So yeah. I'm not aware of anything. I didn't see anything. All right. But wasn't there something in the email that people this. wouldn't? Well, we did. We stickers. We resolved something a couple of weeks ago for two people. Okay. Like it resolved, and we resolved. I think we resolved Mary Crombie tonight. Okay. Your recent email said something about more issues with transfer station stickers. Yes, I think it was this person. Okay. So uh, it wasn't like a placement of them or anything like that. No. Uh, um, just Caroline had said. I, I remember now. Just this last week, I think, that um, the front office was going to had said that at least one person would be coming, and perhaps more than one, but I guess it was just one. Oh, well, you were going to look over the ordinance. Yeah, but, but what it, yeah, but it didn't have anything to do with, the, with, with using it without a sticker. That's why I'm confused. Right. Yeah. Put it there, I'm not sure. All right, so I'm going to go on to town administration. Uh, so new year, we've asked uh, various groups for annual reports. We've asked committee chairs to uh, take a look at their membership and to um, try to update us with recommendations if they want to make rec recommendations for um, um, vacancies. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, we should uh, sit with our legal counsel to sort of map out things that we might want to do this year. We haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. um, I did, while well, I did not draft a select board of select select board report, annual report, I did do a report of our financing projects, which I uh, saw. That. So we, I don't know if it will actually be in the annual report or just make it one of these things we just make available on the website, but we, uh, did you have any questions or comments on that? Thanks. You're welcome. And I did update it with the transfer station stuff today because Caroline had given me the details. So. Great. All right, the Kino, we've already, yep, did you? Transfer station question. I just I just forgot to ask you. Um, Lamprey's meeting on the thirty first to approve the budget. Okay. Um, I cannot get out of work because we have to finish off a grant at work. Um, George um, said that he can go and vote for us if that's okay with the select board. We've already reviewed it. Um, the Lamprey has yeah. already reviewed it at the last meeting. This meeting is just to approve it. Are they okay with our road agent uh, doing this? I mean, is it, are they yes. do they require a board? No, they just require a representative, and I will let them know ahead of time that he will be representing us. Do you have any objections, Mike? Okay, because we I've already reviewed it. Okay. I've already sat with Lamprey. Okay. There's no changes, and it's the numbers that I already gave you. It's just a. That's quick. Cool. When is it? Yeah. The thirty first of two. Is that a Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, it's after Wednesday. Okay. Yes, they always do Wednesday too. So he's going to miss the stormwater meeting because that got rescheduled to Wednesday, the 31st at 1. Oh. That's, I mean, I'll be there uh, unless crazy things happen with the weather. But he's been to Juan. You know, it'd be good to get him going to that meeting. But that's okay. I mean, the, 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 this is an important one to go Can to. Can I send Ed? I don't mind. George doesn't mind. I mean, and if weather's an issue, it's a, it's going to be moot anyway. Right. If weather's an issue, then 
my page of them showing up anyway. Everything is, all the cards are up in the air. And the right. reason that the stormwater coalition is meeting the 31st is because we had weather last Wednesday. Right. And so there are a lot of. Wednesday the 31st at 2, where is it? Where is it? Uh, Madbury Town Hall. Is it always there, by the way? Yeah. You could probably have yeah. So what would you like Jody to do? Do you want her to check with, or do you want to just say you will do, you will do it on our behalf? Um, I'll, I'll do it. Can you well. just say he would do it? Thank you. I will, yeah, thank let, you. I will let Valerie know. Had you already asked George? Yes. And I will tell him. I'll be sending that and tell him to go to the water and yeah. set. <laughs> he probably is the dog. Uh, it's just making me <laughs> think I should remind him. With Madbury Town Hall? Yes. I'll send you the email. Awesome. All right. Okay. All right. So uh, we've done Kino, right? Uh, we're on to housing standards. So, what, um, again, the board, we will have the opportunity to go through the warrant once we're closer to when. We need to have this in place to recommend, not recommend. But I'd like to at least publish the housing standards and get it out there so people can look at it. So are you were you okay with the housing standards in that draft? And we can just put that out there. Okay, excellent. All right, uh, planning board review of water runoff regarding the ruling building. So this is just uh, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. So, Mike, my understanding is that the planning board is trying to get uh, the owner of the Blue and Building. Why did you do it? Can you? Sorry, I'm just the the notes, sorry. So, the, um, because they are increasing the amount of um, impervious um, surface, mm -hmm. there will be additional runoff um, from the front. Uh, and in the back. The back is um, there's going to be a retention, a small retention pond, so it shouldn't really be an issue. With the front that um, um, our consulting engineer, Mr. Stevens, our planning mm -hmm. consulting engineer, had. Um, so um, George said he didn't feel qualified um, to make a determination whether or not it was significant, significant or not, which I applaud him for not just guessing. Refreshing. Um, so um, the people, the folks uh, representing Mr. Aspie, who's purchased the blue and old Bloom building, wanted to look at the um, the plans for the work that was done at the lower mill, the, the pipe work that was done there, and they wanted to do the calculations of how much water can fit go through there, and so if it, whether and, and to see whether or not it truly will be um, an issue, and they had to make other other um, other plans to uh, to deal with this problem. So mm -hmm. shouldn't be no cost to us. It's, uh, Where's they, this? They um, they have to pay the cost. Yeah. No. And my my uh, my worry, concern, or whatever is that if we use Hoyle Tanner, mm -hmm. or if the planning board, or they use they're not using them. They they just need access to the to the plans and to ask them some technical questions that we would be qualified to answer. And Georgia would have to jump oh, all by the It's not a full-fledged task, then. No, it's no, just, no. Oh, okay. I think I... I Mr. Stevens is still the, is still the engineer oh, okay. for the planning board. All right. All right. So, so, so they just wanted access to the existing plans of what we just did? Yes. Okay. All right. Which, no. Some of which may still be proprietary oil tanner. If there are any fees associated, yeah. it's yeah. up to the applicant to bear them. That is nothing yeah. to do. We, we, all right. Absolutely. We so I'm okay. I just needed some right clarification. Yeah, I came in halfway through those emails, and how did Car my question was, how did Caroline start talking to these people, and not was the planning answer. board secretary or right. Miles? Right. So I got all confused. I yeah. was like, where I was did this come from? Confused. And how come we're you know yeah, exactly? Okay. I think it was because it was yeah. our um, our engineering firm that we used because it was the town it was the town side, so she was just being the go between. To, to reach out to Oil Tanner before this, I can't remember Mr. Aspie's yeah. term, um, uh, engineer's name, before they just reached out to the, hey, I want to see your your plan, and like, who are you, why do you want to see, because some of it may be proprietary, so. That, yeah, I, well, I mean, some of it is, well, we pay for some of it, in some cases, though, it's still, 
that some of the engineering stuff is still owned by them, and that you know we can make use of it for ourselves. Right. But you know it's a question of other other people, and I just can't mm -hmm. I, I can't answer those questions. Okay. So, but uh, but I get confused because I mean it looked like Caroline was sort of trying to arrange some no, spending, yeah, something no, that was going to require some no. spending, and so it got me. So that's really no, 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 I was no, no. Like, huh? When What's I this? looked at it first, I'm like, wait a second, this is not what we've been talking about. So I think we were just confusion. Okay. Okay. We saw John Krebs's response to that. You know, what what was it? That, yes, it was in fact I was right. It was just to look, go look at it. Okay. Okay. It wasn't I, I it saw wasn't the like we were, you were hiring through. those people or anything to, uh, to all right. at, at all right. Stevens is still consulting. Okay. All right, so the next item on the agenda is um, Map Geo. So we've, the link is up there on the website. We did a little bit of PR to let the residents and public know that, that uh, we have Map Geo and they could link to it and they could start using it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the folks at SRPC, SRPC uh, have offered, well, we asked them if they would do a demo at some point after it was up and running. Yeah. So, uh, so we could specifically invite the planning board, mm -hmm. zoning board, right. and of course the general public. So my question to you is, do you want to shoot for something like April, like after town meeting? Have you talked to them over there yet? The executive the folks at SRCP, because their executive director has resigned, right? right. So I don't know if there's any sort of well, stress with schedule. Well, so they really fine. <laughs> I mean, you know, they'll hire, they're, they've already got started to search. You know, just replace the executive director with another executive director. I'm sure they're very capable of doing yes. that. That was my point of raising it, just saying, you're asking them just, they may not be available as much as they used to be. They may be filling in some of the duties that, that she has. That's all. So my question though for us is what when do we think might be a good time for us? So we'll let SRPC, you know, be adults and respond and as they go and respond. You want to do it in February, sir? No, I, I no, unless you, unless there's a a, a a real concern here. I think for me, April sounds like right, you well, know, after town. So, so I'm not asking for a specific date. Just is that does that seem like a to sort of sure. shoot for April? We should we do, can do it before April vacation. That'd be great. I was gonna say do it the thirtieth. I'll be in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> this won't be this won't be one of our meetings. The twenty fifth. Okay. This this will be like a Tuesday night or Wednesday night or Thursday night, something like that. Yeah, any time. Yeah. So any just roughly. Before right. the last week in April. Okay. So. Um, so we'll shoot for the April. last week and not a Thursday. Not a Thursday. When is school vacation? Is it the 16th through the 20th? Uh, depending on what school you're at, yes. So before the 16th? Is that before the 23rd. So schedule it before the 23rd? Yeah. Okay. And I believe Rollins for its vacation is the 16th. Right, yeah. 16th through the 20th. All right. And everybody else is the 23rd. Okay. All right. Um, the, the next one is just kind of an information. Um, and I, I'm not. I think I put this here, but there's House Bill 1226, yeah, so which right. will restrict, if it passes, mm -hmm. restrict our ability to um, place a water ban that would include people with private wells. Yep. I saw that. I saw the email. So, uh, I guess if any of us feel strong enough, we could, you know, write to legislators or whatever. I mean, and hearing already happened. I mean, I really don't know. You know, personally, you know, water is water. I mean, if you know, if somebody on a private well is going to uh, run an aquifer dry, it's going to affect people, other people, not just those people, because you know. Just because you have a private well to an aquifer, the aquifer itself is broader than that and, and is, you know, uh, functions many other people. Too, right? Yeah, I, yes, so the municipal association is providing uh, some, you know, whatever whatever it is, whatever viewpoints they. So, so anyway, I, I certainly don't favor restricting our ability to put in a water ban that includes people with private wells. I don't know. The rest of you feel, but I'm, you know, let's we'll see how it works out and how it. Uh, do you have a comment? Yeah. I'll stay out of it. Okay. Uh, 
I mean, we can tell you right now if it's done, if it's still active going. I don't know if you give me two seconds, I'll tell you. It may be a moot point. They may have already recommended to fill it. Or pass it. Or you may have a chance you can go to conference, Susan Ann, and you can yeah. uh, start a... They had a hearing on the 16th of last week, right? Well, yeah, I'm just, you know, it came through on an email or something, so I'm yeah. just mentioning it that it would have an impact on. Yeah, I think it's because the the, fellow, the gentleman from Minnesota Association wrote to was it Minnesota Association? I thought, or I yeah, whoever it was, because we were one of the communities that put a ban in place. I think that's why they reached oh, out. Oh, I think it was. They yeah, reached out to Caroline, and she passed it on to us. I yeah. believe. Okay, uh, committee appointments. So, uh, as you know, I, as I said, I well, would do. I sent out uh, letters to committee chairs, to et cetera, et cetera. And it occurred to me, as part of the conversation of doing that, that the joint loss is probably not, not one of the committees that this board needs to make appointments to. Right. And it's administrative, mm -hmm. and then the group kind of manages it, it on its own. So, we'll take that off the list. And the only reason Conservation Commission is there is because we never finished the process last year. Uh, you know, what I came across was an email from uh, Al saying, well, he's thinking of recommending, tentatively recommending that Lorraine be made a full member and that Herb, Herb Uetta, her, maybe both Herb and Lorraine be made full members. Okay. And, but he never got back to us and we went on to other things and so it never got to resolve. No, so we actually have people serving, uh, I'm not sure how active they are, whose term ended it last March because we never reappointed. So I'm having an ongoing conversation with him and yeah, the whole world is bad as well. yeah, so we'll see we'll see what happens. But in any event, he did say when he did get back to Lorraine wanted to remain an alternate and her Buetta uh, really couldn't take on that commitment. So but he didn't say how he would what we're going to do in 2018. We're so going to make a recommendation to us. We have to continue to have a conversation with it. Uh, we're going to table Oak Street Boundary. Uh, this looks like a repeat non resident use of transfer station. Uh, so I don't have any other information. ACE. Andrea Caps. And it could be that it's. Was it wasn't from last week. Okay, so. so it's a carryover. Maybe it was just there to see that. I think it was this fall. He hasn't come in. Mm -hmm. Non resident use. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, because the transfer station said that he comes in when they were busy. So he's still using it. I think that could be. Yes. How would the board like to deal with this? If that's what this is. If he is actually going in when we told him he couldn't, then we just send him another letter and tell him he's to stop. Mm -hmm. That was the decision of the board, right? So. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember what Andrew's email said. I just vaguely remember her saying, Sam sending an email. Okay. So that he, he's going in, didn't we tell him he had to use his wife's car or? Well, that's what we said when he came to see us, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or get a letter from us to say that he could do it every time he wanted to do it? No, there was no or. The, the, yeah, Mr. Bollock has been used, has used his, his ex-wife's vehicle for, for a few trips, which is a valid transfer station cycle. However, as of late, he has been driving his own vehicle which does not have a sticker. Perhaps the board could send Mr. Baldick a letter advising that he continue to use the transfer station. Um, a fine will be imposed. Appreciate you in this matter. And wrote back, you wrote back that we're not sure if we have the time at the moment to look at the transfer station ordinances about the fines. Is that what this one up here means? 
Piece of transportation without stick of review ordinance. Or fines. Yeah. Now we know that solves that mystery. Okay. What happens to you? How's that book? That's what happens when she does something. Mm. Okay. Uh, recreation. <coughs> statement. I, I admit I didn't. Uh, something came through from Celia, I think. Yes, they redid I, the mission statement and made it shorter. And let me see if I can bring it up. We actually voted it in. We had not had one. Uh, to provide fun, engaging, and reward. And rewarding. Reporting. Is that to yep. provide fun, engaging, and rewarding recreational activities and experiences for residents of Rollinsford and surrounding communities? That's pretty short. Okay, so how is that related to grants? I guess, um, did I misunderstand something? They needed a mission statement for some grant writing. Like six, sporting goods, and things like that. Oh, I see. So, okay. Uh, I'm not sure, this may sound like a crazy technicality, but I'm not sure the Recreation Committee can accept a grant. The governing body would actually be the group that accepts grants on behalf of the town. So just keep that in mind. I don't want to, we don't want to squelch anything, but uh, that would be particularly so, like, um, this is my line of business. So, so if you were to, sometimes when you, when you make a grant application, you're committing a group to something, either some cost sharing, some matching amount. And so to the extent that there's any, even if it's a, in kind, to the extent that there's anything like that, that has to come through us before it even gets, makes an application only because you're committing town resources and you need the appropriate authority in order to, to do that. So if that's just something to, to keep in mind. You know, we could be talking about grants of like you know, $400 for, yeah, something. But, but just, just, just be aware, just, just keep that in mind. Okay. And the other one is the skiing. Yes, yeah, so Kaylee, um, who's coaching basketball right now, Werner has been offered to take it over. George went and plowed it. Um, yeah, I saw that. That was wonderful. Yeah, and then they went to go get the liner, and the liner was destroyed. So the brand new liner that Tia had bought is dried out, rotted, cracked, not usable. Oh. So. Well, they don't want. I mean, they have a shelf life, right? I mean, I think she had. I thought she had said that we would have to do this every year. Am I wrong in remembering? No, that? I thought. I remember every year, every every other year, every, every few other years. Year? I thought. I thought that it was. Liner that would last for a while. That was the whole point of buying a liner and not just a piece of plastic. Oh, so isn't a liner a piece of plastic? It's yes. a special. Yes, piece of but it's, I think it's a better quality. <laughs> it's a thicker piece. Right. Okay, <laughs> all right, fair enough. Fair enough. So, so this was a really this was a nice liner and now it's not usable. Yeah. So I talked to Kaylee because she's coaching the basketball team that's always on, and uh, they were talking to Tia to find out where they got it, and I don't know if they'll get one this year, but they have volunteered, and now it may not happen. Mm -hmm. So, but she's busy with basketball right now. Okay. Um, the other thing we talked about last night was um, online registrations. So, is there any way that we could do online registrations through, like, a Sports Illustrated website, which, like, the softball league uses and stuff, and the money when you sign up online, the money goes directly to the checking account. Who's checking The town's checking account. Checking so, we don't have to decide tonight because I'm still investigating. So, no, no, all right. So, but, so we would be using a service. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned Sports Illustrated. It's some service mm -hmm. that allows online registration for, in this case, sporting yeah. or, or uh, a camp, summer yes. camp. And that online break with the, the money transaction would uh, go directly to an account. So if there must be a fee associated with it. it. Well, for SI, we call it SI, it's $2.50. So Zoe's registration is $80 for softball. I pay $82.50. Okay. So the user, and the end user, user would pay the fee and pay the fee. No fee to us. There's no charge to the town. Right. And then it would create a school a lunch is the thing. It's the same thing I say. Yeah. 
whatever, whatever amount I put on, yeah. it's, it's like two fifty more or whatever. Uh, it sounds perfect, and then it gives you a spreadsheet of who registered. Yep. So it does no, a little record for you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'll yeah, try to great. find um, if best I can do it because it's usually geared towards a team. I don't know if we can do a summer camp. So I had a call out this morning, and they were in I don't know a convention or something. Yeah. So. But I mean, at least one to, to, to wonder. I mean, if not SI, then then maybe right. somebody else or some something else that, that provides that. Okay. You know that that's that's great because I think that was a source of some yes. confusion. Yes. So, great if we get it done. Yeah. Like so yes. that it's be better for parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More convenient. And then better in private your own if things would go up. Right. So all those things. So, so I think this is uh, yeah. The other thing Excellent. is Excellent. Nice work. If we can if we can get it done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, the other thing is we um, agreed to hire um, Brittany as um, the director this year. Um, I reached out to her today. She accepted. She'll be signing her paperwork this week. Um, and then we agreed as a, as a committee to reach out to our existing staff that we wanted to invite back and to send um, letters of, are you interested, and do back by March 1st so we know where we stand on how much staffing we need to hire. And was Brittany the director last year too? She was the, the assistant, assistant director. Okay. So what is the what did we decide was the board's role in this? I've I've forgotten to be honest with you as far as we do the that hiring. hiring I think. Pardon? We do the hiring. Yes. Okay, but you're you're so that's so why I'm sending out the letters. So. But they do the vetting. And they, okay, they so are so are you now recommending to us as a board that we uh, make an offer to Brittany mm -hmm. to be director? Is that? Sure. Yeah. I think that's what. Yeah. I think that's yes. But we were hiring people and just like finding people to hire, and we we're like, yep, yeah, let's get them more. Let's get them more. A absolutely. Yes. But the board. You know, so so when so you just made a recommendation to the board that we hire Brittany as our director. Yes. At for for the for board. summer camp. For Do we have a an amount? amount? Yes. Do you know what it is? Yes. Do you want that public? Mm hmm. Oh yeah, that's me. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. So, so we'll just make a motion. Yes, yeah. we'll just so make a motion to hire Brittany um, Powers at seventeen dollars an hour for um, summer rec director. And this is per the recommendation of the rec committee. Yes. So. Okay. Uh, any questions? Comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Congratulations. Is Brittany um, the daughter of? Um, yes. Can't think of a first name. Yes. This is Powers. Yes. <laughs> My daughter is uh, uh, in the director. Well, can't think of a first name. Okay, excellent. And I think that the board is just, just does this for the director and the assistant director, as I recall. And then they have the power to um, hire. Yeah. I think that's what we, we decided. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, I think we are done with tabling uh, welfare. All right, so we're now on to standing items, board member mm -hmm. activities and updates. <clears throat> so the historical committee met last week, I think it was, or the week before last. Um, and would like to know if the board, they, they, they would like a, um, a fund, just like um, a special fund we had to set up for the Trusted the trust fund would have to go on the on the March warrants <coughs> so they could have a non lapsing fund they put money into it. The question is, would the select board be making that recommendation or would they need to be petitioning or not? Or they come to us before wanting to have Why? But do we know that this is possible? I mean it's yeah, it, this was the record this was the thing the recommendation of the um, Through the AG's office, the um, I can't remember what they call it, the charitable something from the bureau. I, I, I'm drawing a blank what they're called. Remember, we, we got information back in them. No, I don't remember seeing that. Okay. Well, I know that this has been it. a long. I know that it's been a long-standing question. Yeah. Um,
I mean, I thought that was one of the distinguishing characteristics of a committee versus a commission. Mm -hmm. And it's not a commission. No, it's not. So. on the mailing list now. I thought we'd gotten that straightened out. It's, it's possibly, I don't know, that's why I'm going to remind him. Anything else? Well, Michael is, is looking at that. Jody, you've got, we're trying to arrange the lamprey. Yeah, thanks for the lamprey for me. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, we had a meeting last night. We're meeting again on the 11th, I believe. The 11th. Um, Basketball is going great. The boys just had their first game, I think, this week, she said. No, it's coming up. Their first home game is tomorrow. Um, the girls are working with Summersworth, and we are 3 and one or something like that. They're having a blast. So that's, that's really nice. It's nice to see this activity. This is a really cool thing. So nice work. Um, OK. Ready for building permits? Yeah, I'll we'll have, we'll have to come back. I'll we'll have to take it up next week. I can't find it anymore. It's been a while since we got the information. So. Anyway, so. I don't know what to do. So, first one you have is a uh, octave department. I wonder if you can see. For 934 Portland Avenue. Jennifer Moore. Uh, it's a ways from me. Is that the farmhouse? The one with the farmhouse porch? I thought they'd been in there for a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking of the one that the only other new construction is up uh, somewhere near you. That's Morebridge, so. though. That's Morebridge, yeah. That, I, that, I doubt that yeah. that's nine. Yeah. Well, he's put Andrew here, obviously. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to sign. Uh, 2018-002, it's uh, 11 Cricket Lane, I guess that's Cricket, uh, they are doing work on um, the garage, and it's, uh, it says new construction, addition, so it must be a new attached garage. Uh, and do an upgrade for a bathroom. Mr. Uh, Clark has reviewed it. It's a ninety dollar fee. They're putting up a new garage for. Huh. It's. It, may I? I didn't say electrical. Or something. He already has a building permit for it, but he came in and asked that um. he needed to do one. Oh, so oh, this says the electrical, electrical piece. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't say. Uh, oh, all right, fine. Okay. Thank you, so much. I'm reading the thing which says new construction and addition, so. Okay. Next one is 2018-003-471 Locust Street. Uh, this is also electrical. I figured that one out on, on my own. $90. I read if I actually put yes. Did you put a yes in this one? What's that, 471 Locust? So we have 
building permit 2017-135. I brought it in December, I guess. Mr. Clark is recommending that we do not issue the building permit until we have receipt of a New Hampshire Department of Transportation driveway permit. It's a uh, paving of a driveway. They put a driveway in one way or another. It's a, a 720 Portland Avenue, so we will. Um... Is that mortgage? No. Matthews. Hold off on them, I guess. Tom called them again on the 18th, which was just a couple of days ago. Try to follow up with one of them while we'll hold on to it then. Okay. And we have uh, a permit from, I mean, a permit, a um, purchase order for the town clerk. So I can make sure it's all filled out, sir. Um, okay. Move purchase order number 1361 to LHS Associates for the yearly voting machine maintenance for $225. Second. Any discussion? I do. Okay, so this is the just a maintenance on the Guarantees and the fixer repair, you're going to tabulators, blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's what we're doing anyway. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 How much was that for? 225. 225. That one goes that way. That's what this comes to me. That one? Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, that sign, uh, thank you. You want this one? I have it scanned. Okay, so we have a, a um, petition warrant article for the reader? Or? Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $250,000 for road resurfacing and sidewalk repairs and road drainage improvements. Town clerk has verified that 25 people that have signed it are indeed registered voters in the town. So noted. So we have we are in receipt of it. Keep that together. Okay. And that one we're not acting on. And that is the red folder. Cool. Uh, we today's operation management plan is the last downstairs. Oh yes, Gia. Um, we had wanted to make a change where if an emergency happens, nothing happens to you. We don't have to vote to see who takes over. So the succession is chair, vice chair, junior. If we're all gone, then it goes to chief and administrative assistant. Did he change the succession of the other groups? I mean, I made a bunch of edits. Did, did no one look at them? I looked at the whole document and made some edits. Okay. There was no succession, for, or the succession for the police mentioned that the sergeant was the next one, yeah. and there's now a lieutenant. Is that do we really want to go from chief to sergeant? And there was no succession for the town clerk, and there there's now a deputy town clerk. So it seems to me the succession could go from the town clerk to the deputy town clerk. There was no deputy town clerk five years ago. Or whatever. Okay. So I I. I, I'm just, you look puzzled, and now I'm puzzled because I went through, I went through the trouble of, well, the last time we had talked, you had, that was the only comment that we had had, and then... And then I, I, I went through the whole thing and, and sent it out to us and Bob, and... Is I'll this, check with Bob, because that was the only thing, that's the only page I looked at. Ah, all right. So Bob might have already gotten those edits. Maybe he made the other edits, so I would love to check with him. Okay. But we're meeting again anyway. So. Okay, excellent. This thing won't be over till April. Okay. So. Joe done. I, I guess I wasn't done. So. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I'll wait till you're done. It was my fault. I, there was something else stuck in this folder. So. 
Okay. I'll check drunk before you see the doctor. Okay. I'll sign a check. Um, oh, that was the way I have a problem. Marketing has to wait for non public. Okay. So this is uh, Lavelle Computing Services with a blank PO. So I'm assuming these two go together? Yes. Okay. So let's see if we can fill it out. So let me tell you the, the background. So sure. Lavelle Computing is the company that we, he's a resident in town. We come, what we generally do is buy a block of 10 hours at a discount. Yeah. And so there was a, when Tom, our auditor, I think it was Tom, our auditor, was here, Caroline had given him a, some information on a drive, and it, it had viruses. And so it was his recommendation that we have somebody scour the uh, machines. And so Tom didn't have enough hours. And so, so the PO is, is to, to buy another block of hours, I think a couple of which we've already used up. Okay. So that's what, the, if you wanted to fill it out for, to go along with that invoice, that would be sure. perfect. All right. Move to accept purchase to order 1347 to Lavelle Computing Services um, for a 10-hour block of time for the town of Rollinsburg for $760. So. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. I'll sign it when you okay. fill it out. Is that good? Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Call it line information. What is that line? IT. Just IT information type and services. Okay. CASA is deeply grateful for our $500 donation that we gave them on the 8th, and here's our receipt. Do we want to file that? Yeah, yes, and also uh, Caroline is trying to, I'm hoping he can compile some of these so we can put them in the annual report. for final payment okay. um, on the 27th of December amount owed to contractor by owner as final payment of $15,189.47 to J. Parker and Daughter. Why I think it's um, it just if if I I'm guessing but I think it's their their bond people's release because and, you know we've paid they're they're agreeing that they have received their final payment blah 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 okay it's sealed by a notary three copies I think it's just for us to file okay I'll take a quick look though and just to... and what was the amount of that fifteen. Uh, $15,189.47, <laughs> which is a payment that was made like back in November yeah. or something. <clears throat> so it's, um, it was signed by Parker and the consent of the search. So this has to do with their bonds. They, they're being released. The bond people is being released. You know, they're releasing. You know, whatever, whatever responsibility they had to Parker into the team. Okay. Uh, purchase 
order, move to accept purchase order 1348 to New England Rem Remediation for mold, rem mold remediation, let me try that twice, um, for $3,500 for town hall. Second. Any discussion? I'll just say that, uh, you know, we normally do this in the fall. We did put it off, I think, till, till January. So um, I will call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> This is a list of year-end paid time off totals for town employees, including um, police. So, we sign. So, I'll just assume that... Um, Why is why is Dushram signing? Oh, he's just he's just signing for for the police. So and you're signing as a supervisor for the rest. Of for the rest. Oh, okay. All right. So do we have any questions or comments on this? I assume this has been calculated correctly. It's ours. Citizens report of the debit card usage. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin and Caroline. So yep, I've seen it. Do you want to look at it? That purchase order 990 to 2 way communications. This is for the highway department. This is wiring harnesses and antennas for radios for backhoe and skid steer for a total of $838. A few seconds. Okay. Yeah. So George came in here, he couldn't stay because he was there were icy roads. Sure. And so what he's wanting to do is uh, Make some of the radios that have been made available mm -hmm. to put them to install them on the skid steer and mm -hmm. the whatever. And I said, you know, George, it, we probably would just want to kind of review it all with you. So we'll look at it tonight, but the next time you're here, we can have a conversation about it. Because the, the, the bottom line was enough so that I thought we might want to check with him. Okay. Is that, are you ready to just rock and roll with this? No, I because I'm picturing. A radio, or are they talking about like the radios that we would not? Allow? I don't know. So I, I that, that's why I thought he should come and chat with us. I'm it's imagining it's like hardwired, like mounted, but who knows? It's know. a good point. It could be, yeah. it could be a portal, right. but so. I can't. Well, it wouldn't be wired and everything. So, so. I don't know. Shall we table this until he's? Yeah. Sure. My recommendation. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let me give us somebody with that in the chat. Okay. okay. Uh, purchase order 1104 to Urban Tree Service. Tree work on Old Mill Lane for 13000 No, 1300 Sorry. Uh, 
heart's back beating. <laughs> Would you like to say it and I can explain what that's for? The dot I'm wasn't I'm there. I'm not sure if I do or not. Yes, it's like All right. So again, George is here early this evening, and yeah. Urban Tree had a purchase order to do some tree cutting. Sure. Yeah. And they spent an extra day okay. uh, doing some of the some tree work that he and George thought needed to be done. Yeah. So this would be coming out of. Uh, 2018. Okay. So we do have $5,000. Yeah, yes. So, so given that, are you ready to have me call the question? Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 So Georgia, that would go in the same thing. Uh, it's salting now. So. Doing, yeah. Uh, no. Doing something like that. So I'm just wondering. This is for tape. Yeah, well, I'm okay. okay. wondering about. Um, his purchase or other purchases. I wonder if he's got two way lined up to come in. I know it takes a while to get them lined up. But I'm sorry, what? I'm just wondering if, if, he, if he has two way lined up to be coming in this week or something. So, so she, no. No, no, he doesn't. Okay. He, you talked him, to him before he came Yeah, okay. I, I said, look, you know, it would be better for the board to have okay, a that's conversation fine. with him. So he, he was fine. absolutely fine. He's okay with it. Yeah. I just didn't want to. There was no pressure. No okay. Oh, I did that. Okay. Uh, Stratford County Delegation. Uh, schedule of dates of meetings and key events. Uh, uh, proposed budget, Monday, January 15th. Miss that. <laughs> Full delegation public hearing and meeting Wednesday, January 31st at 7. Snow date is February 7th. Subcommittee meeting Thursday, February 1st um, to Friday, February 23rd. Executive Committee Public Meeting, Friday, March 2nd. Full Delegation Public Meeting, Wednesday, March 14th at 7. So, you're all welcome to attend. So, I will say, just so that we don't forget this, that the county portion of our tax bill is now roughly 80% of the town's portion. Should we leave this out for a public event because it explains sure. the budget? Sure. Sure. I think that would be good to see the sheriff's salary and all that jazz. Because mm -hmm. so, this can be good for. I'm assuming. Do they have a website? They must have a website with that stuff available online. Yeah, for the, for the deputies and all those people you mean? Yeah. Or for the elected officials. Yeah. The jail and all that stuff is in there, right? Yeah. Briefly. Um, town, from the Department of Revenue Services, the DRA. Your own award in accordance with RSA, blah, blah, blah. The Department of Revenue has reviewed the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practices, the USPAP. Standard, <laughs> standard 6 report submitted by Avatar Associates of New England. For the town of Brown for the tax year 2017, I enclosed a copy of the USPAP Standard 3 report with the USPAP mass appraisal. <laughs> I have concluded that the appraisal lender review complies with all requirements set forth in Standard 6 of the USPAP. <laughs> Did you just enjoy saying it? <laughs> town to know. I mean, I, the, the, yeah. the Department of Revenue Administration has some oversight to assessors who work within the state, mm -hmm. and they conduct, you know, audits of the assessors. And so, yeah. so even though, you know, every year there are people who don't so, like what they do. But so the U.S. path. Yes, the U.S. <laughs> they have to follow the U.S. path. Yes, U.S. path. Is that also something for non-public? I'm not sure. Um, this is Comcast. The letter to Comcast um, from mm -hmm. our lawyers. Oh, I see. Okay. 
so to start the conversation about renewal or this letter follows my prior correspondence on July 25th requesting information on negotiations of the renewal franchise. We have not received any response. Okay. So he's just trying to get the process moving. And this is bond material, so I always turn it over to you. All right, so our bond council, Linnell uh, Rie, has provided the DRA with a copy of her opinion, which is just what she needs to do, and in so doing has given us the same copy. Um, this is Health Trust giving Carolyn authorization due February 5th, but you signed it in December. Yeah, I already did it, so. Okay. There's nothing more. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's Okay, this is the five-year agreement. You guys had signed on the oh, eighth, signed it, and you were leaving a spot for me. I'm assuming that's why it's still in. Okay. So I signed it. Okay, well, perfect. Before the meeting. Here, I think there's just two copies. And there's two copies, them. and I signed them both. You both signed them, so okay. we're good to go. So lead in the water. Um, okay, that was the definition that got sent out. Yeah. To residents. That um, Dennis was here about water earlier. Um, this is the letter from the DES to the Water Department. Um, Tom was reaching out to him, yeah, so that's still in here. And just a non-public legal okay. issue. All right. So I guess we're done. So so I've, got a, I've got a request for oh, this okay, person. Yeah. Um, it's to pay for the, it's from the rec committee, uh, to pay for a referee for the boys' basketball game for $30. Pay or it's just pay referees. I mean, you need to approve the record. Any yeah, reason why you wouldn't want to pay? Yeah, I can't imagine. But it's yeah, part of the budget. Out, they used to take it out of concession. We told them we couldn't do it out anymore. Thank you. Okay, that's this is much better. Yeah. By the way, uh, we don't have official audit results, but I did have a just a brief conversation with our auditor Tom, mm -hmm. and he was so happy to see that the rec committee didn't have their <coughs> checking account. <coughs> I says, yes, it's given us some challenges, but uh, we also like that there is no yeah. uh, checking account. And did you see the spreadsheet that you put together? Uh, multiple sorry, tabs. Sorry. 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 I'm sorry. With the multiple tabs? No, was I supposed to? No, I did, don't know if you saw it or not. Did something come through? I don't know if it got sent to you or not, but it was okay. very great. She's very good with spreadsheets. Yes, she is. She's excellent. Um, any news on Dave Salvage? Tom was going to follow up because they had 30 days. So they have. I, I know of no, I have no information. I can, uh, can ask Caroline. They were there from uh, Tom. Oops. December 7th. And they requested 30 days of this letter. What was the date of that letter? Uh, they were there on the 7th. The letter was written on one December. Seven. Or January 7th? December. December. The letter was written December 22nd, though. So they have till January 22nd, which is about today. today. Hmm. So right. they request we'll 30 check. days of this letter. You submit a plan and schedule for removal of your solid waste from the facility. So. Today's the day. Comcast again, credit card procedures, and that's it. Actually, just. Right. Any community input? Uh, yes. Um, is there a procedure or a town, part, uh, town employee or select board member that grants need to go through? The what? Grants. And the board. So they need to come to the board. It, um, yeah. You know, normally, again, you know, what I'm thinking of maybe so far beyond what you're, what, what we're actually talking about, if it's just some small little thing, I mean, is, does, does that seem onerous when I say that? Are you, are you hoping that you wouldn't have to do that? What? No, I'm just not clear on the correct pathway to take. Yes. So, so let, me, let me try again. So... So the, the board, this board is the governing body and manages the finances on behalf of the town. So
So a grant would, a grant sets up, it's not a gift, it, it's a grant with terms and conditions, and so we would need to ensure that those terms and conditions could be met by the town. So we are the body that would do that. So normally grants should roll through here. So it, she, if she writes it up and just shows it to us? We would just say yes, okay. Now, is, is has that happened with all grant making within the town of Rollinsford? No, I don't think so. So, but, you know, little by little, you know, we, we try to get to us the things that belong to us. And if they don't belong to us, I just assume not have them. But, you know, the finances and stuff, so, and, you know, committing the town to certain terms and conditions should probably come through here. Sponsorships, are they running the same way as grants? Sponsorship, what do you mean by that? Like CJ gave us twelve hundred last year. So those are gifts. And we just, you know, unfortunately, we don't have policies to govern these kinds of things. Um, are you expecting to, is that part of the revenue that you, that you were anticipating? Uh, it's a possibility. I mean, I did look at two possible funding sources today. Um, I mean, if that's an out-and-out -out gift, uh, you know, we would just accept it as a gift and put it as part of your anticipated revenue for the rent committee. I mean, that, I mean that's an out-and-out -out gift. A grant usually has terms and conditions associated with it. You know, a grant period, you know, sometimes you have to do a final report, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, I do know what I was looking at today, one of the companies was, they like to give out grants of, or, um, funds mm -hmm. in the amount of $500 to help as many organizations as they can. The other one is open-ended. I don't know how much they give out because we've never utilized them before. But we, we can surely complete the form um, and either send it through the board or um, the board. If there's a form, then, you know, uh, and we're not, you know, is it possible to look at this and say, okay, you yeah, have to make these decisions yourself? We could, but I mean, I think it should come through here. I don't think it should. And there was talk also that there are a couple other sites besides Sports Illustrated that might work for online registration, which the community needs to look into. And, and again, if there are contractual obligations of any kind, then that, that suggests, you know, like this service with SI. That, the board would need to interrupt the board. So if somebody had brought up Google, so that would have to come through you guys Google too? Google is fine. As they had used it before as possible, like registration, and then you could, there was a way to go about it through Google. Um, yeah, and I would say it, it, if it sets up any obligation on the part of the town, then it needs to come through this board. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because we're the group, the buck, the buck stops here, in essence. Okay, that was my question. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? So yeah, I'll, I'll call you or Chris to talk about the war article if I need to do it too. About once I find information about the the fund, okay. if it's something we can do or not. So. I was looking at the town meeting sign, so do we need to have a sticker made? Okay. Or do you want to have the sticker made? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so it's just need to put a new sticker on. Over yeah, for yeah. the day. That yeah. We just need one. Yeah, I mean, that should be something that you can do credit card wise with, with Caroline, I think. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we need one for the tenant as well. So that's a public it's all yeah, right. That's, that's the not on the town meeting signs that we already have. This is for yeah. town meeting. Yeah. We can also do. do uh, is there one for the public hearing? There's one for the public hearing. So we have to put one for public hearing. I think you can just use the A frame for that. You just need one. You can have George put them out. So, it would, I mean, the school does their own, right, on the third? 
That's the deliberative session. That's not the public hearing. The right. public hearing they held last week. Or the week right, but that's the school's responsibility. I mean. Yeah, exactly. not ours. Right. right, so our responsibility is just the 10th and the 17th. Well, it's the 7th. I mean, yes, those are the town-related functions. Okay. So if we wanted to have something for the... To, you know, it, it would be nice to have, like we did for the town meeting, mm -hmm. something that we just need to stick on a new date. So, uh, if as long as that whatever whatever it is to get, to fit in the sandwich boards can be done within the credit card limits, then that's the way to manage it. Caroline can just can just do it. Yeah, I can't remember what it cost last year. I think it was two hundred. Perfect. Magic offer. So all right. So, so I'll let Caroline know. I will. Uh, yeah. So, but that you know, so we should keep that in mind. February tenth. Right. Yeah. 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 February tenth, and then March thirteenth, and March seventeenth. I think that's the vote. That's the voting day, and then we can ask oh. the business meeting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we have um, a couple of uh, legal items to review, so I would ask uh, that we go into. I'm going to go into non public session to deal with two legal matters. Second. Roll call, Michael? Yes. Jody? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. 